I did a deep dive on cryogenics so you don't have to, and it is existentially and scientifically deranged. Many have claimed that cryogenic, so freezing your body in liquid nitrogen, or just your head, or just your brain, could end up resulting in immortality. The idea is that if you freeze yourself today, down the line, if procedures exist to recover you, you will come back to life somehow. It is a big business. Companies like Tomorrow Biostasis are offering upfront fees for an entire body for about $225,000 in advance, or about $500 to $600 a year. Did I mention they offer pet membership? Truly one of the funniest things that I found on this website is insurance for your body, I guess. Someone gets paid if they mishandle it. I imagine next of kin. One of the really funny things about this is if you know what's happening in the fertility industry. Now the fertility industry is probably better regulated than the cryogenics industry. As DNA tests are becoming more common, people are finding out that their parents are not actually their parents, they're just some random embryo. The ones that hit the news are usually where the baby comes out the wrong race. That's something that would be immediately visible. Now imagine finding out that the brain that you preserved of your family member was not really theirs, if in a hypothetical world cryogenics was even possible. Though, if they got your brain wrong, chances are you would never know. Okay, let's look into the scientific claims. Why is this maybe nonsense? So this guy, Sergio Canavero, is one of their lead scientists, and he wrote that the whole brain transplant is probably possible. Now, if you're not a scientist, you may not be familiar how to evaluate papers, but let's have a look. He cites the four primary reasons that people say a brain transplant couldn't happen. Also, there's a lot more than four here, and that did confuse me a little bit. Yeah, people might say these things as to why a brain transplant isn't possible. We don't have the technology. We can't extract the brain properly, I guess. You can't reattach nerve endings, which actually isn't fully true. It hasn't been done for a spine, not in humans, but there's a lot of technology that's come out that shows fixing spinal injuries might be possible. One of my favorite ones was one that I've talked about here, using artificial synthetic neurons. Anyway, that, I, I said that for a reason. If we go to his citations, they're just reciting himself now, citing yourself is not wrong. I'm actually told that I do not cite myself enough. It just feels weird, okay? It's not technically a bad thing to do. Most of these aren't even articles. They're books that he wrote himself. The ones that are articles are also citing himself, mostly. Ones published in really low-impact journals, so paper mills. Those are going to be journals that will accept anyone's writing, provided you pay a fee. The thing that really gets me about this is I could have found this guy better high-impact journals to cite from, rather than his own paper from 1992. Even bad science can be written well. This is just the sign of a narcissist and not a good scientist. You can be a narcissist and a good scientist. That is possible. I actually looked into some of these books for you guys. They cite a whole lot of really bad debunked science. Okay, let's say that in the future, head transplants and brain transplants were actually possible. What of the bodies that are sitting in liquid nitrogen? When they do this procedure, they do something like embalming, except they put a bunch of anticoagulants and antifreeze into your body to make sure that when you're frozen, you don't end up getting ice crystals, which will destroy all of the structures. Turns out, your body will still start to degrade even in these containers. That is assuming that they were even maintained properly, which is questionable, again, because of the lack of regulation. Do you know why we have oil and coal on our planet? That's because things started degrading when we didn't have critters that could actually degrade them. In that process, they end up still falling apart. It's not great. This is a lot colder, so it should happen slower, but it does still happen. Incidentally, we have something a lot like oil when critters degrade high on mountaintops or under sediment where there's just not a lot of life that could eat them, you end up getting an oily substance. It doesn't stay together. That is just entropy. Chances are, if there is a future where you could potentially revive someone who has been frozen, your brain and body are probably not going to be intact. Popular mechanics is killing me lately. Could a controversial cryonics procedure make immortality possible? No, not a chance, not a chance in hell. Could this technology be viable down the line? Maybe, I don't know of any technology that is viable right now. 
and freezing yourself isn't gonna help. Now what might have been a better idea and could be equally as expensive and less gruesome if they wanted to take a complete brain scan, every single neuron, complete proteomics, your DNA, everything, in hopes that you could one day put your consciousness into a robot. I would say that's very far-fetched, but less far-fetched than this. Also, I think I've seen a few movies about that. Um, I'm almost certain. Did anyone remember them?